what's up guys welcome back to maestro vapes today we are looking at the goblin rta made by ud okay um a lot of people were telling me you gotta get the goblin gotta get the goblin and i was pretty happy with my billow tank okay uh, but yeah some time went by and i did get one now i have been using this guy for about two to three weeks right now putting builds through it and seeing what works with it okay this is made of 304 stainless steel food grade it's got some big airflow controls on it they are seven mil by three mil high airflow holes on either side that kind of make this a bit of a fog machine now the juice capacity for this thing is only three and a half milliliters of e-liquid so you can go through it pretty quick now this is the version 1.2 that comes with an extension it's got an extended chimney section as well as an extended pyrex piece so you can put up to five milliliters of juice in it okay but i have been rocking it in its original configuration because i feel like the flavor out of it is much more pronounced than it is when you put the extension on it you know you keep it slammed down really low you get a lot more flavor out of this thing okay bottom fill on it it's got a little phillips screw to fill it up it's pretty easy to use the airflow control is very easy now you're gonna see in the up close it's got some kind of janky dirty looking grungy gnarly threading to it in certain sections okay so it does kind of go together kind of ugly in a few different pieces and the bottom section of this thing is really gnarly and it actually seizes on there and then cuts my fingers all to hell as i'm trying to pull it apart okay but it does work really really well um is it a billow killer i don't know the billow it the billow is really nice and i dig the billow a lot but the goblin just has a much more punchy flavor to it okay um, i'm not sure what the billow is like with the nano kit that it comes with it might be pretty awesome all right so is it good yes price point it's really cheap but we'll talk about all that at the end of this video a little bit more we'll go in take a closer look build it and all that stuff all right my friends let's check it out the goblin okay you're a goon but what's a goon to a goblin so here it is all right um the goblin we'll take a look at this guy after we check out the box itself all right ud's kind of stepped up their packaging over the last you know six or eight months and it's gotten better it's gotten a lot better than it used to be so kudos to ud for that box says goblin on it rebuildable atomizer and their logo slide this thing out of here and it opens up two different ways from the back and the front now if you open up the front of it it's got this is the version 1.2 so besides the regular atomizer that it comes with the regular tank atomizer it also comes with this five millimeter pyrex glass extension and a chimney extension as well so if you want to make this a little bit bigger to hold more juice you certainly can with this now i've used this once and what i found was it just muted the flavor a little bit and i didn't dig it so i've been using it in the standard three and a half millimeter configuration because that's what i dig all right it's got some info on here it's 46 millimeters high 22 millimeters in diameter copper pin the airflow control size blah 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 it's leakage proof i don't know about that it's pretty good um 304 food grade stainless steel china's finest my friends all right back of it where it comes from and it's also got a little manual in here um you know it's it's pretty typical chinese written manual you know nothing too out of the ordinary on that one um it also comes with a little bag of goodies now it looks to be 24 gauge canthal in this a little black screwdriver a couple of o-rings some wick and one extra screw okay put that stuff away and i'll save that for you know sometime if i need an o-ring or screw for something i always keep stuff like that laying around just in case all right so now we can put away the box take a look at this guy okay one of the exciting things about this is the airflow on this 
all right? The airflow is huge. You got these dual cyclopses on here and they are seven mil wide and three mil high. So the airflow in this tank is just champ, all right? Very champ. Now you might notice a little gap in here. The reason there's a gap is once I tighten this little ring down, it welds itself on here. Like I'll show you the threading's pretty poor on this, all right? Bottom of this guy, copper post in here, copper uh, 510 pin in here. Very nice conductivity is gonna be a little bit better. It's got your UD logo on the bottom, the year it was made, as well as a serial number. Now this little Phillips screw right here is your fill port and we'll use that a little bit later to fill this sucker, all right? Now I'm gonna take off this airflow control. Now you can dial this thing out, make it really small if you want, make it a bit bigger, full open, whatever you want, really adjustable, and it's nice and smooth to use, all right? Once you take this thing off though, it's a little chunky. Like the machining, the drilling in this is pretty gnarly. Like I've, ha I've tried to pull this thing apart once I've had this welded on and using this and it's just cut my hands all to hell doing it. So yeah, the machining on this thing's not the greatest and actually it's pretty piss poor but it does vape well all right it does vape well um, to take this thing apart top of this thing unscrews from the chimney section so we'll take that off and the top of it that's where you throw your drip tip into bottom of it has an o-ring that your glass is going to sit against the threading that hooks up to your chimney on here is pretty decent like it is not too bad at all and it's fairly clean you know it's fairly clean okay glass comes out of here this is the smaller glass section and the glass is decent you know there's no chunkies or big chips out of it or anything like that mine came pretty clean straight from the manufacturer all right um now, let me take this piece off. Hopefully it hasn't welded itself on. This bottom little lip with the other O-ring in here that your glass sits again against is, the threading in this thing is just terrible. Like I just washed this thing out and dried it with some paper towel and you could probably see a little bit of paper towel chunkies in there because it is really gnarly. Like it's really, really gnarly. And I've had a bunch of times where I've had this thing just weld itself on here. And I spent 10 minutes just trying to tear this thing apart. And it's pretty brutal. Like the threading's pretty brutal. So, you know, beware of that. You know, it does vape well, but you know, the quality isn't that perfect, okay? Same thing with the top of this chimney. It's a little chunky. Like it's a little chunky. There's little bits in there that I just can't get out with the wire brush, you know? All right, chimney is nice and conical and it domes down super steep and it builds great flavor in this thing. Great, great flavor in this thing. Now, this sleeve right here, this little barrel section is uh, has a logo on it. It's got the Goblin logo on there. So that's pretty neat to look at through your glass when you're vaping this thing. <laughs> Let me take this thing off and expose these big, deep juice channels that are in here. All right. Da -da -na -na, da -da 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 -na. Actually, the threading on this part is actually fairly clean, okay? Fairly clean. Is it perfect? No, but it's fairly clean, okay? Juice channels on this are deep. They're nice and deep juice channels. The screwdriver I've got in my hand is 2.4 millimeter, so looks like they're 2.5 millimeter juice channels in this. Like, they are pretty deep and thick beefy juice channels. So it's gonna deliver juice really effectively to your wick, very, very effectively. Now the airflow holes that pop out of these Cyclops slots come up into these three millimeter holes on your deck, okay? And there's, there's no lack of airflow on this thing. There is no lack of airflow and it performs really, really well. Now the screws on this guy are a little small you know, they're a little bit small, a little bit difficult to use, but you do get used to it. You, you do get used to it. Um, the holes in the posts on the negative post are very small. They're not the biggest post holes, but you're not going to be putting like 20 gauge builds in this because it is a tank atomizer. Okay. Um, this negative post right here, when I got it, 
was pretty much touching my positive block. So I had to bend this out a little bit and now there is a little bit of a gap in here. So I don't hard short out with that, okay? But be careful of that. If you do get one and it's bent over, try and bend it back or bend your center block over a little bit just to get away from that. You wanna make sure your positive and negative are not touching, okay guys? Um, I do like the, the positive block with the two holes, makes it really nice and easy to build on, okay? Speaking of building, maybe we should build this thing. The insulator in this thing holds up pretty well. You know, it holds up very, very well. I haven't had any issues with it, but really I haven't built too much lower than 0.2 ohm on it. You know, and 0.2, you get a decent vape and it can wick and keep up and uh, you don't have to keep filling up your tank 100 times a day, all right? Let's put this um, airflow control back on. I think it goes on this way. And we could start building this guy out. Now, I'm gonna put a build in this thing that I've been really enjoying, all right? The build we're gonna be doing on this thing is a two rep 16 gauge build. Just kidding, guys. <laughs> Just wanted to see what everybody was thinking there for a minute. Uh, this is pretty much pushing it as far as it can go. This is 26 gauge Canthal and 0.5 ribbon wire. Okay, ribbon wire is a little more narrow than I typically use in a lot of my videos, but it does work really, really well. Okay, the vape on it is spectacular. All right, I'm gonna be wrapping this on a two millimeter driver. Let me get one out of here. Get a two mil driver. And that seems to be a nice diameter for the deck itself because the deck is a little bit small. Once you put that sleeve on here, there's not a lot of room and you wanna make sure that you're not touching this sleeve with your coil, okay? Or you're gonna end up with a short. Now, yeah, I've, I've done some 26 and 28 gauge, just straight Canthal builds with 2.4 millimeter driver and it works but it's very tight now i've heard of people doing 30 gauge builds in this around 2.7 and 3 mil kind of stuff and you can get away with it but you just need to cock your coils over a little bit now i don't want to have to cock my coils i just want to be able to center my coils up and be happy with it you know that's just what i dig now let's wrap this shit up Let's wrap it up. If you don't know how to make tiger wire, I have a video on my channel as well for how to twist tiger wire. I'll try and remember to put it in the description if you wanna take a look at that as well. Pretty quick video for how to do that, all right? I got four wraps on here. Make sure that you're putting these in tight, okay? Make sure you're putting them in tight because you don't wanna pull at this wire too much from the legs. Um, because it could fray up on you, all right? Where are we, five wraps on this now? That's five. So I'll throw in a sixth one. And you know what? I wanna throw in a seventh one. And that's just gonna be perfect, all right? Now, this wire is fairly thin. I could just pull it with my fingers and tighten up the wraps if I need be, all right? Squinch that together and we're off to the races. Just put this into those post holes, man. Snug that up. Make sure it's good and tight. There it is, man. Now I can go to the outside hole. And to my negative. And then I dial this in pretty tight. I want to make sure that my positive is almost touching that block. Just almost touching that block but not touching the block. You wanna get as much wire in here as you can, but you don't wanna to be touching your center block, okay? And now I just push it over just a little bit, just like that. Just trying to get it over that airflow hole. And now I can cinch down my negative Beautiful, all right? So we're in position now. Just gonna tighten those up good and tight. Let's make sure. I don't wanna have it be too far out and then not be able to use it. 
Uh, so that's going to be pretty good. Now, what I like to do is I like to leave it low. And then that way I can bring my wire from my other side up and over top of this coil. All right. We can clip off these excess leads. And wrap the other one up. All right. Put that stuff aside. And do another, ew, that was the wrong screwdriver. That was close. What we do on that one? Seven, right? Trying to keep it nice and tight. Three, four, five, six, seven. Nice and snug, man. There we go. Nice and snug, buddy. Cool. Squeeze that together. Then you could scoop this leg a little bit to go over top of that coil if you want. Hit that one up and over. And try and nail that negative while you're pushing through. Same thing here. I'm just trying to get it close to that positive block, but not touching it, you know? Oh, and there's one other thing that's always nice to do. That little excess piece of leg that you clipped off is always nice to kind of push up and get out of the way. Okay, that way it's not going to touch on your coil and, you know, start arcing in there. All right, that looks good. Snug her up. Okay, I'm just gonna push this a bit. Let's get that negative leg cocked over a bit. Exactly like that. Make sure it's not gonna touch though. Twisted wire is kind of hard to get in here, but you can do it. I actually just cut the leg off there. Hopefully, didn't pull it from the other side, and it just captured. Hopefully. But now I'm not going to want to push that one over too much, just in case the leg is loose in there. Okay. Okay. Looks to be secure in there. It didn't pop out, but, you know, let's be careful with that. Just make sure everything's snug before we start firing it, okay? Now we could take these coils and jack them up a little bit. Just like that. Right about there. Beautiful. Same thing with this one. Just bring it up a bit. All right. I'm pretty happy with where this coil is. It's over top of this hole pretty well. This one I'd like to push over a little bit, but because of that leg breaking off on that side, freaks me out a bit. So I'm not going to worry about it. All right. Still going to be enough airflow that we're not going to have a problem. Now, let's check this thing out on the ohm meter. See what it ohms out at. Right now, we'll see if there's a short from that leg as well. So it's coming in at 0.27. All right. And that's a nice vape for this thing. 0 0.27, 0 0.3, 0 .0, up to 0 0.5 is a really nice vape in this tank, man. Very, very nice. Let's give this thing a couple of dry fires. And then we could wick it up, and I'll show you how I wick it. The way I wick it is very simple. Simple is good, okay? I like this Nemesis, because you could just push off on the table with it as you fire it. Tiger wire takes a little bit to get going. There we go. Boop. 
Put a cat's gone. There we go. Just kind of slightly pulse it. That's how I get down with it. There we go. That one's heating up a little bit more. Sometimes I just like to put my screwdriver in here and shake it up a bit. I'll usually get rid of any weird hot spots and stuff like that. Let me do this one as well. Just kind of roll it around and make it cylindrical again. Sometimes when you pinch it up, it gets a little flat spots, especially with tiger wire. Oh, that one's pretty hot. Give this guy a little pinch. Not too much. Sometimes having this camera in front of me is brutal. All right, that's pretty close. I'm going to make sure everything's still tight here. That's good. Yeah, those are good. Yeah, these screws are a little small and difficult to work with, but it's not terrible, you know? That's firing nice, man. That's firing pretty cool for this thing. Um, wicking it, what I like to do is just use a cotton ball for this, all right? Just a standard old Swispers cotton ball. These are the cotton balls I use when I use cotton balls. These bag of Swispers, man. Pretty simple, all right? Um, find the end on it. There it is. Peel it apart. Okay. Make sure there's no big chunkies and lumpies in it. Now, we did just run this around a two millimeter inner diameter, so we're not going to need a ton. Like, we're not going to need a half a cotton ball. I would say probably a third of this is going to be pretty good to wick this up with. All right. So let's aim for about a third. You know, where's a third? About there. Yeah, that's a little too much. I don't know. We'll see how it works out. Peel that off. Okay. And then I go to my rolling technique that I just dig. Like, it works. Now, I never put a ton of pressure in here. I kind of like, I like to use like a cloth or your pants or your shirt or something just so it's something to grip onto. And then I start spinning it against it. And it gives it a natural cylinder. That's all it's doing, you know? It's just taking that kind of flatted matted piece of cotton and making it round again you know i'm not putting a ton of force on this just enough to turn it you know like i've seen people message me and they're like dude i've done this but it doesn't wick like the cotton's too tight and i gotta stress like i'm not putting a ton of pressure on this like it's really airy it's really fluffy and that's kind of what keeps keeps everything that i wick wicking well you know is the airiness of the wick and i think you know that ties through to tanks as well it's not just drippers that this is effective for all right now i get it spun up spun up it's nice rip it right in the middle and that's where i make my point you know that's where i make my point once i twist it you're gonna see it's pretty small you know even where it thickens up right here it's pretty small when I run it really tight, okay? Oh, trying to get rid of that point so it goes into the coil a little easier. Do the same thing with this side. Give it a nice point. And I'm trying to keep it from having this big lump. Like a lot of times I see people wick and they twist it and twist it super tight and hold on to it. And then it's like a big chunk and it rolls down into this small point. I like to kind of have it, you know, arrow and point off, you know, just 
nice and even. It makes pulling your cotton through a lot easier. There's an ugly point as well, man. What am I doing today? We're trying to wick, dude. All right, you can attack this either way. You know, left to right, right to left. I just kind of dig it this way. Maybe I'm just used to it. Get that ugly point in there. As soon as I can grab it with my fingers, start yanking it. Now, I'll pull on the right side just to make it easier to bring it in. You know, sometimes I'll even work it up and down a little bit to try and help it, help it in there. But I just bring it in there until it feels not super loose, like it's gliding through a little too easily right now. But right there, we're kind of getting to a nice thick part. So I'm just going to back out just a little bit, just a little bit. And there we go. All right. Um, do the exact same thing on the other side. Exact same thing. You know, symmetry is a thing of beauty for building coils and wicking. If you're building duels or quads or quints or <laughs> six tuplets, hexagonal coils, whatever you're building, if you're building more than one, symmetry is a thing of beauty. All right. Same thing here. Just kind of pulling on it a bit. Then I work it in. I just tug on the left side and then rock it in. Let it feed in there nice and easy. Till I get to a point where it feels like, oh, maybe. No, nope, that's still going. But right there, it doesn't want to easily pull through. It doesn't want to easily pull through. So just back slightly. And boom. We're going to get nice wicking. Now, wicking this thing, I take it in tight. Okay? I cut right to the edge of the deck man right to the edge of the deck nice and tight okay it's pretty important on this guy same thing on this big bad boy just nice and tight bring it in nice and tight okay and now what i do is pretty easy okay i don't put anything in the juice channels i think you don't need to do that but the bottom of this I just tuck it in slightly. I'm not killing this thing. I'm just bringing some of this cotton in so it doesn't get trapped, okay? And I'm trying to make sure that when I put the cap on this thing, it's not gonna pull a bunch of cotton into the threading. Okay, just a little bit in there. Make sure it's not blocking off your airflow, but just tucked a little bit and then I leave these tufts right here and once I put the cap on, it's just gonna bring that down and sit against it, okay? And it's gonna wick perfectly. Same thing here, bottom of it. I just push that in. And this is actually perfect amount of wick right here, perfect. Tuck that in just so we don't get any into the threads. Same thing here. But see the wicking, like once you roll out your cotton nice and smooth, it's just so fluffy when you cut it, like it's, it's perfect. I've been wicking like this for a long time and it works so well. Like I think wicking, wicking methods really fascinated me when I started building and I was seeing certain videos with people wicking and having different wicking styles. And I realized pretty quick that, you know, wicking is just important as your coil build. It really, truly is. That one might be a little bit too long. You know what? I got enough tucked out of the way that it's not going to affect anything. Okay? Now, I'm just going to take that cap, put it over top. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Now you're looking at it. There's no cotton getting into the threads there. I'm putting this thing on upside down. Now oh, let's rock it upside down. See if this works. It's going on nice and smooth. Okay. Now one last thing that I do, once I've got it on here, it might shift your cotton a bit. So I just push it out of the way. Just push it just a little bit. I'm not matting it and killing it, but... Just making sure that it's going to be in front of those juice channels. 
something looks out of place, you can fix it right now pretty easily. Okay. What are we going to juice this thing up with? I'm going to try this juice out. I got some 416 vapes. A dude let me try, so I'm going to try some out. Worst case scenario, switch the juice out. You know, like, <laughs> pretty cool, man. Smells good. But I'm just soaking it up just a little bit. I'll put the cap on here. Okay, and now that hideous section that I just detest can go on as well. And I guess this time I'll tighten it up to the bottom. <laughs> Ugh, that's just going to weld itself on there. I know it, man. Now your tank section, when you put this thing on, make sure it's sitting even because it can move around and shift a little bit. As long as you got it centered up pretty well when you put this together, it's going to go together nice and you're not going to get any juice seepage out of it. Okay. Put that guy on there. We are so close to vaping, dude. So I'm going to take this off the mod right now. We'll vape this on something else, I think. Snug that. Now, typically, you would see that Goblin logo in there looking right side up, but it's upside down because that's what I did with it. Um, drip tip. You can put a drip tip on. This is from my CLT V3, and I kind of dig this one on here. I just works well for it, I guess. Um, I need a bigger screwdriver for this. Take this bottom fill screw out. And if you remember the billow video, if you watch that one that I did, it's the same fill method. You know, it's it's the same. Um, this fill screw does not have an O-ring on it, but I haven't had any problems with it leaking out of there. So it's pretty cool. All right. And you put your needle tip in. You could put some other juice bottles in here and dripper bottles, but, you know, needle tip really works well for this. Just start squeezing juice in there nice and easy. And then I take it up. Oh, little bottles always take so long to fill. It's not like a 30 mil where you just squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. You kind of got to give it bursts. Bursts, he says. Yes, bursts. Just like how my batteries burst. <laughs> I put the burst rates on them when I build low. <laughs> Shit, man. Going delirious. Then I just bring it up. I don't want to flood it out, but as it's coming up, it's coming up, it's coming up. And I go till there's just a little bit of air in there. And I back off. Okay? Back off of it. Just so I don't flood it out. All right, I'm going to put that screw in here. We're almost there. Now, just like I've always done with my cave funds and all my tanks in the past, might just be like a habit that I've gotten into, but I cover up the airflow inlets and then I turn it upside down and let the juice pump up till there's no air in the bottom of it. And then I can let off. Okay. And that has always worked for me to avoid any type of of flooding on this all right so let's take it out have a vape off the old goblin all right the goblin But what's a goon to a goblin <laughs> syrup sip an animal <laughs> anyway yeah the goblin it is cool like it is very cool and the flavor in it is banging all right it is very very good flavor out of it and i dig it a lot the juice capacity in it is not a lot so be prepared if you're using this as your all-day vape device you might have to fill it up a few times you know you definitely will you'll go through it um when i originally built this thing i did a simple build which was a 26 gauge seven wraps dual coil and it worked awesome like it worked so awesome i was super pleased with it and i think i've ate that thing for the first week week and a half that i had it before i even played with any other builds you know and it's one of those tanks that i just looked at and i just thought 26 gauge 
is going to work well in this for my kind of vaping preference. And it did. Um, so yeah, definitely if you want to try that 26 gauge, seven wraps around two millimeter inner diameter, it's going to work just awesome. But I did want to step it up just a little bit for this video. So I did do the 26 gauge Tiger build, which is fantastic as well. If you want to see how to twist Tiger wire, I got another video on my channel for that. Okay, um, check it out. Check it out. It does work well. Um, you can do 28 gauge builds in this as well. I did try a 22 gauge build in it, but it just wasn't working that well. And I definitely stick to Canthal builds personally. I find in tanks that they just don't scorch as quick and burn up your cotton. You know, I prefer Canthal in tanks personally. Um, the 22 gauge Canthal build was okay, but it was a little bit too hot. Like it was a little bit too hot where it just scorched your drip tip up and it was fire, like it was hot fire. Um, 24 gauge you can get away with as well. I like doing around seven or eight wraps on tanks. Like that's, it just works really well. Maybe six wraps at the min, you know, like six wraps on 28 gauge even works really good for this tank, okay? Um, some of the good. The good, the flavor is off the charts. Like it is excellent. Um, looks of it, it's clean. It's easy to look at. It kind of reminds me of a K fun. Like it looks a little bit like a K fun. And if Svo Mesto made this thing and some of the, you know, gnarly, chompy threading was cleaner, everyone would be singing the praises of the goblin. Like everyone would be like, oh my God, Svo Mesto knocked one out of the park. It's awesome. What are they going to do next? And it's like, you know, a year later, they'll make another one, but whatever. Um, it is UD. So there is going to be revisions of this and it's, you know, going to get better, I would assume. I hope that somebody pretty much makes this exact same RTA with better quality machining. You know, that's pretty much the only downside to this thing. Like that bottom section is so tight. Like I've had it locked on there about four times where I've spent 10 minutes each time trying to get it off where it's like I'm reaming it. I've got like these, you know, these uh, stove gloves, like oven gloves, oven mitts, and they're like rubberized, grippy, and just trying to ream it apart. And then I'll take like a fork or a knife and tap it to kind of free it. It's just so bad, and I can't clean that out of there. Um, and the holes, like the holes inside of these airflow controls are pretty janky and chunky too. Like they are very chunky. It's just finger cutter kind of stuff, you know? So... Be careful with it. The glass section is decent and it vapes awesome. Now, the price of this thing is cheap. Like it is dirt cheap. You know, if it was 50 bucks, I'd kind of be pissed off at it. I'd be like, oh, if, or 60 bucks. I'd be like this, I don't know. The flavor's good, but the machining is so shitty that it's not worth it. But I've seen this as low as 27 bucks. You know, as low as 27 bucks US. I've seen it, you know, as high as, you know, 50 bucks Canadian, but, uh, you know, that's pretty much 35 bucks ish US. So it's not terrible. It's about 38 bucks actually, um, with the current conversion, but it's not a bad price. Like it is not a bad price at all. These things have been flying off the shelves and they've been hard to get. I know Dash Vapes has them, check them out. They've got these in stock. Um, and I don't know, maybe somebody else, a bunch of other people I'm sure have them, but they do vape well. Uh, the coil I put in here works good. Flavor is off the chains. It's the closest thing to Mike since Janet, you know, like it is like the closest thing to a dripper thus far that I've been able to vape. Like it is fucking slick. And the wicking, as long as you keep the wicking really nice and light, you don't want to put too much in there. Because once you put too much in there, you're just going to clog it up and it's not going to be able to keep up. And you're really going to dwindle away from that flavor, okay? You want the juice to be able to come up to those channels, sit against that cotton, and just wait for you to rock it. Like, that's it. That's it. That's all, man. Like, pretty simple stuff. Um, all in all, I think it's worth it. Like, I think it's worth it. And if you're... You've been thinking about buying one try it out like but just you know be aware that the threading is going to be kind of shitty you know it really truly is leaking problems 
I haven't had too many leaking problems. Like I had way more leaking problems with my billow until I figured out the last video where I was like, this is how you wick the billow. That's how I wick it. And it doesn't leak anymore. Like I can have it sitting on the side and it's fine. But uh, I haven't had any wicking issues with this thing or leaking issues with it. It's pretty stellar. Like it's pretty stellar. That's all I got to say. The goblin. It's a goon to a goblin. <laughs> anyway, guys, it's been cool. Hopefully that video helped you guys out. You know, it was a long time coming. I've been playing with this thing for a while. It's been a while since I put up a video, but there it is, my friends, all right? So remember, like I always say, butt out, vape up, and breathe easy. Know your limits and vape within it. And you, my friend, are going to have a stellar day, all right? Me and the gobs are going to kick it out of here and kick it old school and all that stuff and catch you on the next one. All right? Take it easy.